You're tuned into Recovery TV, the voice of hope, with your host, John J. Tassoni Jr. Discussions and information on addiction and mental health issues. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. My guest today is Mr. Dan Kupersmeyer, and Dan is the president and CEO of Thrive Behavioral Health. Welcome, Dan, and thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for having me, John. Why don't you give my viewers an overview of Thrive Behavioral Health? Sure, my pleasure. Uh, Thrive is the mental health center for Kent County. Uh, and as a mental health center, we're required to provide the full gamut of services for adults and children. Uh, and we're also a provider of homeless services and residential services throughout the state. Thrive is a combination of two organizations that merged uh, four years ago, Riverwood Mental Health Services, which was a specialty provider of mental health services in the East mm -hmm. Bay and in Providence, and the Kent Center. Merged them together and then we rebranded ourselves as Thrive. So we remain the, the mental health center for Kent County, but also uh, uh, specialty homeless and residential service provider throughout the rest of the state. How about children? Do you deal with children at we all? We do. We have actually a very large uh, children's program for a mental health center. Uh, we have uh, outpatient uh, services, uh, enhanced outpatient, and a healthy transitions program, which has uh, uh, been very successful, that uh, uh, focuses on adolescents and young adults experiencing the first time psychosis. And the goal is to keep them out in the community and avoid hospitalizations and get them used to uh, adapting to their, get their needs met in the community. It's been successful. So we've had healthy transitions. We also have the Eleanor Briggs School, which is a special needs school uh, for uh, kids K to 12. It's uh, for 35 students. And we have five, se five separate grades that uh, get uh, taken care of. And uh, we're also providing consultation now in some of the school systems. Uh, Coventry, Barrington, North Kingstown, as uh, uh, the challenges post-COVID are uh, coming to the forefront right now. So we're, well, overall, we work with about 350 kids and their families, because you don't just work with the kids. The right. goal of working with kids is to uh, work right. with the whole environment. Post-COVID, are the numbers increased? They have. Uh, what we're seeing is uh, an increase in anxiety and social interaction issues for kids. I mean, that's been, are you talking specifically for kids? We've yeah. seen, we've seen yeah. it, we've seen it with both. But specifically with kids, there's definitely been uh, a setback for, for a lot of children. Mm. And our biggest challenge right now is uh, getting the workforce to work with these kids, mm. kids or adults. Uh, if you have to ask me what the one biggest challenge we're facing right now, it's, it's, it's getting the workforce to meet the increased need uh, because simply where we as, law, as well as other uh, human service providers are finding it really challenging right now. We're down about, oh, 48 staff out of 320s. So that's about 15% wow. 15, 15 15 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and and why, just, why is that, Dan? Is it, is it because people just said that it's washing well, your hands with behavioral it's health? It's complicated. It's, that's, that's, part, that's part of it. It's, it's a problem that's been a long time in the making. We haven't had a rate increase in nine years now. Nine. Nine. That just, uh, the clock just ticked to nine years. And so what we've been doing is essentially uh, paying staff what we can and finding alternative ways of uh, generating income, whether it's uh, we have a for-profit pharmacy that we operate, we uh, have a number of grants that we've been able to get to help, uh, you know, supplement staff salaries. But you can just do that for so long. Hmm. So that's caught up with us. We're, we're not paying what we should be paying. Uh, and then on top of that, COVID has forced folks to relook at uh, the jobs that they're doing. Uh, for some, they've decided that it might be easier and less stressful to go uh, work for Amazon Prime for a couple bucks more an hour. You have some parents who uh, went home, took care of their kids, and realized that, well, maybe it's not worth it to go back to make uh, inadequate salaries and pay daycare costs when, in fact, the most important thing they could potentially be doing is raising their kids. Mm. So you, you combine all that together and we're sort of at the perfect storm of the, of the workforce crisis mm. that we have right now. So that's, that's our biggest challenge. We know, th we know uh, what the need is, we know how to meet the need, we just don't have the workforce right now to meet it as best way as we could. So if, if you had a, um, a, a globe and you looked at the globe and you looked at what you need to retain individuals, is it 
ten percent? Is it twenty percent? Is it thirty percent of a rate increase? Do you have a number that you're looking at? Well, we we don't. And if I say we, the, the system right now is doing a recalibration. Okay. There's a new initiative right now called uh, Certified Community Behavioral Health Clinics. And as part of this particular program initiative, uh, we're doing a cost analysis of our uh, system to come up with what would the cost-based reimbursement be for the services we provide, the actual cost. In other words, what, what are the market costs for uh, counselors right now? Uh, for case managers, for nurses, for doctors. We're getting all that information together. So I don't have the exact info. We know it's somewhere in the range of probably 15, 20%. But uh, we're getting that data right now. So uh, within the next few weeks, we'll have a specific number in terms of what that looks like. But again, we're talking probably 15 or 20% is what it's, gonna, what it's gonna come down to. But then you look at the other end of the spectrum. You've got electricity, you've got gas, you got gasoline. Oh, no question. The other the roof. So, I, it, it, as you indicated, it's a perfect storm for everything. And not just that. We just got our health insurance renewal rates for our staff, which we which we provide uh, a substantial portion of, and that's looked like it's going to be about seven seven plus uh, percent this year. Yeah. Um, last year it was around nine percent. So we're not quite at the double digit years that we had during the 19s and 2000s. But it's back up there. So that's nine percent more. And it's a shared. It's shared between staff and the organization. So, uh, the, you're right. The perfect storm is not just in staffing, but with this, the latest inflation, that's really hitting us big time. So when you when you bring a, bring a, uh, a candidate in to have a discussion about these forty some odd jobs that you have open, what is their big thing? Is it healthcare? Is it wages? Is it vacation well, time? For, is for, it sick time? Yeah, we we provide a very generous benefit package. We have you know. Uh, three weeks vacation to start, four weeks after a couple years, uh, and that's part. That's part of it. Um, wages, you know, you've got you got to pay adequate wages first right, right. before the benefits discussion, you know, even seriously kicks in. Right. Once you're somewhat in the ballpark, then the benefit question can, can come up. Um, another thing that folks are looking for right now is the ability to do telehealth. Okay, we're, we're a, a, a service industry where you can provide serve some services via telehealth. And what you've got is a number of providers, the clinicians and right. nurses and doctors, who want to make sure that whatever uh, uh, their expect expectations are, that there's some room for both in-person and remote uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, in your, your opinion, now that we've had this remote um, therapy going on for probably about maybe a year and a half, two years. Yeah, it's, is, two and a half. It's, actually, it's actually coming closer to two and yeah. a half. <laughs> is that adequate, the rates that they're paying for telehealth, the providers, I mean the uh, insurance the, the companies? The rates have been the same as they had for regular service. I mean, the one, the one thing, you know, we can criticize the state uh, for many things, but one thing they did right was when this crisis, the, the COVID uh, pandemic really hit in uh, March of 2020. 20, yeah. uh, essentially, they, the, the state, with the Office of Medicaid, and that's our primary funder. The vast, well, the of our 4,000 clientele, the vast majority of them are on Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So we're dependent upon Medicaid funding, and the state was remarkably quick in enabling the switch over to telehealth at the same rates and to enable services that heretofore would not have even thought of to be done remotely. Let's say our clubhouse. We have a, a club house style clubhouse based in uh, Warwick uh, that we call Hillsgrove House that, that deals with uh, 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 during the day folks get together, you know, yeah. basically yeah. do the work all day. Bottom line is that the uh, state enabled us to go virtual immediately so we weren't able, we didn't have to miss a step in terms of that. So the rates were continuing to be paid. Right. Uh, however, the rates were, were not adequate to start with. Right, so right. that has that has maintained right. going forward. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I want to talk about the homeless population. Sure. You've been watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni, here with Dan Coopersmeyer from Thrive Behavioral Health in Warwick. Now back to Recovery TV with your host John J. Tassoni Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host John Tassoni. Dan Cooper is my is my guest today, 
and Dan is from Thrive Behavioral Health in Warwick. Let me ask you a question before we further on in my discussion of homeless. How many locations do you have, Dan? Um, office locations, we have four primary locations, two in Warwick, one in Providence, and one in Warren. And we also have uh, six residential programs scattered throughout the state. Barrington, Portsmouth, Tiverton, uh, East Greenwich, uh, and in Warwick and West Warwick. Mm -hmm. um, and we have literally hundreds of apartments that we're uh, leasing and subletting for, uh, for folks, particularly for the homeless program. Yeah, so let's, I'm glad you walked right into that one for me. Uh, your homeless program. Mm -hmm. uh, as someone who has been in the legislature for 12 years and I did a lot of work on the homeless and the first of its kind in the country, homeless bill of rights. Uh, it seems Great work, that, by the way. Thank you. It seems like the homeless issue is not going away anytime soon. And what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing is that in 2023, because of the, it, the influx in rate increases in gas and electric and heat, oil, uh, gasoline, there's going to be more and more people who are going to be looking for housing. Matter of fact, I got two calls over the weekend. Is there a solution to this? I mean, we, we're throwing a lot of money, a lot of money into housing. But it still seems that there's a lot of people looking for housing that can't the, get housing. The solution is simply affordable housing, and there's an unfortunate lack of it. Right now, we have uh, 60 folks who have vouchers for uh, single bedroom units subs uh, that provide the subsidies. They can't find the units. So as in terms of an immediate hmm. problem right now hmm. is there simply are not units available for, and, I, and I'm talking folks, who are, we're talking folks who are chronically homeless, extremely right. needy right. individuals, and there's no, there's no vouchers for them. They're, they're now saying that there's about 400 folks that they're uh, looking at in terms of needing some sort of emergency shelter beyond what's currently available. And, and that's in the West Bay area. So it's, 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 a, it's a critical problem. But back to your original question, the solution. The solution is, is affordable, is the development of affordable housing. Hmm. But we don't have any time to wait. That's the problem. That's, that, that's, that the, takes, that's, that's the issue. It takes, it takes time to develop affordable housing. So mm -hmm. down the road, I understand there's quite a bit of money that's being infused into the, into the housing industry to make it happen. But uh, it's, it's literally years down the road until that actually hits the market. Mm. Well, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, with all the problems that we have here in Rhode Island, you know, substance use, mental health, homelessness, everything takes time. Rate, the rate increases, takes 18 months. You know, everything takes time. It doesn't seem, in, in my mind, it doesn't seem there's an urgency from the state's perspective to get these things done in a quick and equitable way. It just doesn't. It, you know, it's just hard for me to understand that these things go unnoticed. You look at the hospitals, the emergency rooms. You look at Hasbro, which made national news a few weeks ago with the amount of wait time in any of these facilities to get treatment. Why? It's a $64 question. Could it be? It's because of uh, staffing. That's part of the reason. But also, too, we got a shortage of primary care docs. We got a shortage of psychiatrists. We got a shortage of regular workers in the mental health substance use areas. Again, we'll use the word perfect storm. You know, but the problem, the problem, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but the problem, too, is that you come on our side of the table. You get a family member who gets, needs treatment. Hours upon hours upon hours waiting. I had a family member in a particular hospital a few weeks ago, eight some odd hours in the emergency room. He's not well. He's got brain cancer. How do you put somebody in a corner, in a wheelchair, that is in severe pain with brain cancer, and you just leave them there. You know, one of my favorite quotes, those who have known me over the years, is that every system is perfectly designed to achieve the results it gets. We are designed 
to have these crises in the, in the emergency rooms. We are designed to have the homeless problem that we are, are having right now. You can look back over time and see how they if you could go back to the mid to the mid uh, uh, 1980s when Ronald Reagan cut the public housing programs, and all of a sudden the homeless went from 125 to 600 thousand, and it sort of remained there at the, around that level ever since. The system designed that, and then as of, as housing continues to be developed, well, it's more profitable to make middle to upper scale level housing. The profit margins higher. The system designed that. So the good news is the system can correct it. But the, I guess the important thing is to understand that these things are not happening by chance. And we could look at every single situation and analyze it and understand that. That is why, so the staff shortage starts, we've analyzed that uh, well. The emergency room uh, uh, problems that we're having, you could take a look at the analysis the same way. So the, ant the understanding is there. The system has to be changed. And it's a system that's going to make the changes that ultimately could, could impact more affordable housing, better awareness of mental health issues, better, better treatment, better, better services. The, the, whole, the whole picture, the, the, the hope is that the system will be able to put into effect the changes that, because the system got us to where we are right now. All right, so the, go the governor just called me. Dan, we want you to fix the system. What would be the first thing you did to fix the system? Fund it properly. That was it, too easy. Uh, that it, was too easy, Dan. It's, 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 if, if it was so easy, it would have happened before now. <laughs> That's, you know, because it really does boil down to funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason we have the workforce, the workforce short, it's certainly COVID played into it, but right. it still is a funding issue. Mm -hmm. And it's gone, like I said, nine years without a rate increase. Yeah. And, and and as a result as a result of that we are so so you can't you can you can I could provide all sorts of workplace enhancements but unless you pay the basic wages and be competitive with the rest of the system folks are not going to come work for yes us. we're going to take a break I want to hit on that in the last segment and, uh, what we're going to try to accomplish here if the governor calls me <laughs> you've been watching recovery TV and I'm your host John Tassoni here with Dan Coopersmeyer from thrive we'll be right back after these messages and now back to Recovery TV with your host, John J. Tassoni Jr. Recovery TV is made possible by our supporting sponsors and our title sponsor, AdCare. Now, here's John and today's guest. Welcome back to Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. Dan Coopersmeyer is my guest today from Thrive Behavioral Health. Dan, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on. A man, no nonsense man. You tell me like it is. So we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of children that are homeless. We got a lot of individuals that are homeless. You made a couple of good suggestions on how to get it done. What do you think? You think we'll get it done? Oh, I wish I had a crystal ball that, as so I can act, so I can act confidently say yes. Yeah. But we have to look at the fact that this is this problem's been so long in making and so complicated. And we're not going to help everybody, by the way, because some people don't want help. No. The vast, you know, we our our work has been primarily focused on the chronic homeless, and what we found is that virtually everyone who's chronically homeless does want help. They okay. just lack the opportunity. Yeah, and, and jobs. Uh, and yeah, jobs. jobs. I mean, you know, here you've got, you know, you're competing with a workforce that, uh, and you have every barrier to employment physical problems, mental health problems, substance mm -hmm. use problems, criminal justice involvement, lack of a house. Yeah. I mean, and then you go down to get a job when there's only a 3% unemployment. Yeah, it's a perfect storm on their side, too. To totally so. Yeah. So uh, it's, can we fix it? We could definitely build more affordable units. We can incentivize more housing for affordable units. And uh, that will bring us a step in the right direction, for mm -hmm. sure. The economy improves and the job market gets better. Hopefully, we'll be able to. Yeah. I guess what we found is that folks with uh, serious mental illness, 60% of them can work. Hmm. That's what the data shows. So, Dan, and, Dan and let me we're, we're interrupt working. you for a second. Um, you know, you're on the West Bay, so I want people on the West Bay to watching this show today. If they're having an issue, call Thrive. 
what is your number? 738-1338 is our main number. Just give us a call and we'll route you to the appropriate person to, uh, to help you with whatever your issues are. Yeah, I mean, help is what a lot of people need at this particular point and information. Uh, the one, the wonderful cake. thing is, John, that treatment right. works. Yeah. Whether you have a mental health, substance abuse issue, anxiety, trauma issues, treatment, the, the treatment is there to help folks, but they have, they have to reach out. Right. Thank you for watching Recovery TV, and I'm your host, John Tassoni. Beth Bixby from Ties will be my guest next week.